Hi, my name's Matt Widgery from Matt Widgery Photography. In today's episode, we're going to be having a look at a thing called ISO invariance. Have you heard of this term before? Well, I have to admit that up until a couple of days ago, nor, nor had I, um, but this is something that is coming about simply because of how good modern sensors are. Um, and allegedly what it means is that um, you don't, that the, the, the sensor is supposed to be able to perform as well uh, at gathering information in, in low light irrespective of what ISO you shoot it at. What that means is that you can, if you want to, shoot at your base ISO, push the exposure in uh, post-production, whether you know, you're using Lightroom or uh, Photoshop or some other tool to bring that exposure up when you're shooting RAW and get the same image quality as if you'd shot at ISO 1600, 3200, whatever it is. So. What we've got here is a test to see if that's actually true. And then we'll go on a little bit to, um, to why that might be something that you would want to have a look at. So um, this, is, um, this is the first image. There's a set of four images you can see on screen here. They're all basically the same exposure all the way through. Uh, near as damn it. I've had to tweak them a little bit and I'll tell you what I've done. Uh, but these are four images. They, they were shot at a 40th of a second. You can see up on the top here it says uh, it says f1. That's not f1. That's just because I'm using a manual lens for these. Uh, they were shot at f8. Uh, it's just that there's no detail. Uh, there's no information that goes through from the manual lens into the camera to tell you what that is. Um, and then this one was shot at 6400. This one was as it is out of the camera. And then what I've done this next one, all the settings are exactly the same. You see on this one it says 1600. And if we take this back to where it was. Um, and have a look, you'll we'll be able to see, uh, let's get rid of this thing out the corner. Um, so uh, yeah, you can see this is how it started off um, and that's where it, that's where we got it to. And um, the next one along the line, uh, this one was again exactly all the same settings, 40th of a second at f8. Um, in this case, that was what it looked like out of the camera, so significantly darker. Um, and then on the last one that I took, this was took at 200 ISO, it's still 40th of a second, still uh, F8, uh, but this one when it came out of the court, uh, out of the camera, uh, you have to forgive it. While while um, QuickTime is recording this, oh there we go, it's loaded up. While QuickTime is recording, and I'm doing stuff in Lightroom, it tends to be a little bit laggy this computer. But anyway, when that came out of the camera, it looked like that. So um, what we can see is that this is you know um, as, as you'd expect, this is you know nearly five stops under. It's four and three quarter stops under exposed. Uh, but what I wanted to see was whether or not when you brought the images up to the same exposure if indeed this thing about ISO invariance was, was, was correct or, or at least certainly on the, the Fuji cameras that I use. This is, this is shot on the X-T1 um, so I wanted to see what it was like and, and if indeed that is the case. So um, let's have a look first of all at, at the base one. So normally if you wanted to get this exposure and you knew you had to shoot at f8 and 40th of a second for whatever reason and you wanted to get this exposure um, and the only thing you could do to change that was change the ISO then this is what you'd need. You'd need 6400 ISO. So a good test I think for this particular image is, is this area of the image in here where this uh, derailleur is at the at the bottom of the picture. The reason being that the, the writing is quite small and sort of uh, like there's some quite fine detail in there to see you know how it how the signal to noise ratio is i.e the signal the bit where you can actually see the picture versus the noise which is the the, the grain and the speckly bits that are uh, that are trying to you know that are getting in the way so um, on this one you can see the, the the 105 there that says Shimano 105 you can't really read the Shimano but you can read the 105 just um, so that's going to be our base to have a look at. You can see here where the, the villia.it, that's all pretty close. And as you can see, as you look around the image, it is definitely a noisy image. You know, you can tell it was shot at a higher ISO, but, you know, nevertheless, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a perfectly acceptable, you know, ISO 6400 shot, I believe. I don't know, everybody's tolerance to noise is different, but for me personally, I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much fine. Um, the image overall looks a little flat because haven't done anything else in terms of, of sort of post production with it in that sense. So let's have a look at the next one along. Um, so this one here, this one was shot at 1600 ISO and this was pushed by, 
uh, one and three quarter stops to get it to the same exposure as the one that was at 6400 ISO. Um, none of the other settings, as I said, have changed at all. So when we see this loading up, which it will do in a minute, hopefully stop looking quite so pixelated, and we can take a butcher's, and there we can see where it says 105. Compare that to the other one. There's not that much difference. There really isn't. Like if we go from that one, it might even be slightly, slightly clearer, maybe. If we look at the noise in the background, let's have a look at the noise on this, this kind of book here, the pale blue book. Uh, what that looks like in terms of noise and then compare it to this one. I, I think actually it's even a little bit better. So this was uh, this was nearly two stops underexposed from ISO 1600 and pushed. And for my money, that is slightly clearer. It's definitely no worse. So to underexpose and then, and then push in post seems to not have done anything to detriment the image, definitely. This one was shot at ISO 400. So in this case, we've now gone up nearly four stops. We're at three and three quarter stops that we've had to push this exposure now to get it back to where we were. And if we compare this one back to our original one, which was shot at, at ISO 6400 and was right, this is about, for me, this is about exactly the same. I really don't think there's very much difference in this at all. If you look at where the 105 was, the five is slightly harder to read. Uh, like it is in, in this one, whereas on the 1600 one, it's slightly clearer. Slightly clearer, I think, in that one. Slightly clearer. So I would give the, the win to the 1600 so far. But, you know, the, the 400 pushed nearly four stops is nigh on identical to getting the exposure correct in camera if you're shooting at ISO 6400. This one, this one had to be pushed nearly five stops. This one was shot... 4.7 stops under exposed. So to get this to where it should be, you know, we really had to had to push this. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to take off. Uh, I've been fiddling around with this one. So when it does load, and it is taking an inordinate amount of time to do that, uh, but when it does, there we go. Right, I'm going to take off the the, the contrast and and uh, other bits and bobs on here because. I was fiddling around with that just to see what, what could come out of the picture and also change the colour profile. So I'm going to change that back down to what everything else was. I just wanted to see what you could get out of the image, but that's not the point of this um, this video. So um, this one at 4.7 stops under, you can now start to see, although the noise level is about the same as it is in the original image, you can start to see some kind of colour banding coming in that wasn't there. If you look at the, uh, the look at the the weights here that are behind the wheel, um, you can see that they're they're fairly sort of uniform in terms of what they're picking up the reflection from the the side of the wardrobe there and uh, some little bits of reflection from from inside the room. And if we go to the one that that's been been pushed nearly five stops. You see how how that's changed. There's like a green hue that's coming into the side there, and there's some red stuff. But in terms of overall noise, it's really not bad. And, and if you look at the image overall, you really, I don't think you could tell from, from like the point where you would actually be looking at the image if it was online or something, I don't think you could actually tell the difference. So, so that just shows you exactly how good these sensors are and, and how the modern signal to noise ratio algorithms, not just only in the cameras that allow you to get these very clean shots at high ISO, We've known they're good for, for a while, but what's interesting is how good they are in something like Lightroom as well, at being able to pull out detail and process that very, very dark image and retrieve the information that's in that file that's embedded into it. And that, by the way, is why I always recommend to people that they shoot RAW, because if you tried to do that with a JPEG, you just, you wouldn't get that. The image would fall apart, you know, after, you know, probably a, if you got a stop out of it, you'd be max, you'd, you'd be lucky. But to be able to get like nearly five, and you probably could get five, you know, if we if we if we went up to all the way to five, which is the most that Lightroom can do, yeah, easily. And in fact, let's get a brush on there. Let's get a brush, and let's uh, let's go up another two stops, right? So if we get the brush, make it really big, and we'll just paint paint two stops of of, of extra exposure into this whole image, just for the fun of it. There we go. So we're now we're now two stops over. So we've gone up seven stops overall now from where we started. And OK, yeah, there is noise like it's trying to find stuff in that black that just, you know, wasn't there. But 
with a little bit of noise reduction maybe. Let's put a little bit of noise reduction on there. This is a stupid test, you'd never do this by the way. We'll put the pull the blacks down a little bit. I mean, you know, <laughs> this isn't something you'd ever do, obviously. Uh, and it's sort of is way over its face. But the point is, look, we'll crank the contrast up and we'll, you know, take some of the highlights out. The point is that there's so much information in there that there's the, the stuff that you're now being able to pull out that's overexposed from something that was, you know, shot at nearly five stops underexposed. So this is where the information is in the file, it's in the shadows. If you shoot it the other way, it's gone. If you shoot for the highlights, then try, uh, you know, if you shoot and, and, and blow out the highlights, sorry, then you won't be able to get those back. By the time that's gone to white, there's nothing you can do. You can pull the rest of the, the, the file back, but you, the, anything that's blown will have blown. Whereas, so if you shoot, this is the point, if you, if you, if you were to shoot this original image, like, like this one here, when it does come up on the screen, loady loady, if you shoot this one um, at 6400 ISO and in the background there's a window and you want to be able to see what's outside the window, you won't be able to do it because this will, in order to get this the right exposure, this would have blown. Whereas if you shoot it at a low, lower ISO, the information will still be in the shadows as we've already seen. But because in the underexposed image, you'll be able to see what's going on out of the window, you'll be able to bring the shadows up and then be able to get a much greater dynamic range out of the picture than if you'd have used the high ISO to try and get what is supposedly the correct exposure. So it's a really interesting one to play around with and it's just I guess the point of um, ISO invariance is to not be fearful of, um, of, of protecting those highlights and if you look at the back of the camera and what you look like just looks like it's grossly underexposed but it means you've been able to retain detail in the sky or out of a window or you know in lights or you know whatever it happens to be that are those bright parts of the image that you want to protect you can go a hell of a long way in post-production in order to find those details. Um, it has to be said, with the older cameras, this probably isn't going to work so well. Um, you know, if you're, you know, try it with your camera and, and, and see and let me know in the notes what experience you've had. Uh, how far have you pushed an image in post-production to try and get uh, results back? Um, and is this something that uh, you find helpful? Um, and let me know in the comments below. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Cheers.